getting pretty close. Don't make fun of my magnifying glass. <laughs> Sometimes they really help. So if you're not using something like this, even though it looks dorky, um, I highly recommend it. Definitely get some of those. That's a free tip that's not even involved in this video. I was just sitting here working on this and I, you know, I do my best thinking early in the morning here in the workshop and, and I was doing the bind, I just cut the binding channels and I'm just cleaning up these binding channels with the chisel so that I can begin putting in my little purfling strips and my binding strips. And there's a, there's a little tip or a trick that I always do. And I was just thinking about how, I mean, it's helpful to me and it helps me do a much more precise job and do it a lot faster when it comes to, you know, fine tuning and adjusting these binding channels here, especially um, what we're talking about is on the inside corners, you know, because when you cut with your router, it can't go into the inside corner. So your router that's gonna cut the channel is gonna leave sort of a rounded area there. And that rounded area, you've gotta come back with your chisel and get it just right. And if you don't, if it gets off, it's gonna look weird. And if you don't get it quite perfect, then your, your binding, um, the purfling miter joints won't line up just right and things like that. But if you do this little trick here, it really helps, at least it really helps me. And I have an entire class on how to bind a headstock I'll link to below, but I just wanted to share this one because um, it's especially useful if you don't have a lot of experience. Maybe you're doing this for the first time. It just gives you kind of like almost training wheels uh, to help you make sure you get the proportions of all that stuff right. So let me show you what I mean. get the neck here in a position where I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see it better. Maybe like that, okay, good. So I'm hoping that you can see that this is the way that the router is gonna leave that channel with a rounded area there. And I'm gonna to have to come back in with a chisel and get that miter joint, that corner, that inside corner to be just perfect so that my miter joint can look great. And uh, that can get a little tricky sometimes if you're not real experienced with this. So the trick that I use is, hopefully you can see, is that I don't just cut one binding channel because I have two different pieces. There's two parts to the binding. There's this thinner purfling and then there's the outer wood binding. Now these are oversized. They're gonna get, they're, they're kind of big right now. Before I put them in, I'll take them down and bend them and everything. But instead of cutting one thing, one channel, that's the full thickness of both of these pieces. I've cut two different channels. And that, I mean, just a side note is that helps to reduce chipping and tear out and things that could happen from taking a large chunk out of a, you know, out of this headstock, which we don't want. We want our finish edge where the purfling meets the headstock veneer to be really clean and crisp and perfect. Um, so that's just an um, added benefit is that it helps reduce some of the tear out because you're taking two smaller cuts instead of one giant one. But the, the real point here that I was thinking about as I was working on this that I wanted to show you is that if I can get it in the right position, you might be able to see it, is that it's much easier for me to um, just visually be able to gauge where this point is going to be to create this miter joint when I have the two different um, parts. And so I'll throw in a little bit of B-roll as I'm talking so you can see what I the way that I kind of did this. But I basically began by um, cutting the outer binding first. And so I just slowly, I take a little at a time and I begin sort of moving that point back and forth as I'm removing a little bit of wood from one side and then a little bit of wood from the other side. And I'm gonna position that miter joint, like the point of that joint for the binding, the outer binding, and get that about 90% right. I'll get, it, I'll get it as close to perfect as I can, I guess you could say. But then once I have that right, it's easier for me when I begin doing the purfling channel. And because I'm not, my eye isn't having to um, sort of gauge such a large dis distance. So I'm just looking at the, th the thinner the channel is, e the easier it is to uh, sort of gauge if it's deep enough or not. And I can stop and measure with the calipers just to give me a sense of, sort of double check what my eye, the feedback I'm getting just from looking at it. But um, 
once that uh, the when the larger outer binding is done and then I go to that inner purfling area then it's just much easier to get that perfect every time uh, so splitting those two things up that's the trick that's the thing that makes this easier and helps you get this more precise um, when you're doing your headstock binding okay so there you go that's the little tip or trick is to cut that binding channel in two different passes it's going to help you reduce your chipping and any kind of tear out and it's also going to give you a great advantage when you go to cut that and refine that purfling and uh, binding miter joints and um, for me i find it just makes it a little more fun and that's important because enjoying the process is part of what makes this the art of luthery and not the miserable job of luthery <laughs> and enjoying that process also i find helps you get a better end result as well. So uh, that's it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it and find it helpful. Um, I will link to the course on the headstock binding course in case you wanna look at it. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. 